German American, The German American Experience by Daniel Heinrich Tolzman. We're talking about the German language in American language. So we're not even actually speaking language, uh, pure English. It's, it's an American language. We have too many dialects. Um, there, there is a, a black dialect, uh, Ebonics, that I think is a different American, and there's also a, a hillbilly uh, dialect that, you know, where they say taters, and they say y'all, and they try to say, like, you know, hickabilly, and they try to say, like, they try to mess up the English language, so they, uh, you know, it's creative, and it's unique, which I, I appreciate, uh, but you can't say it's English, so if you're one of those people that get mad for whenever there's an option between pushing one or two on the telephone, press one for English and two for Spanish, and you're like, oh my god, that, you know, that's, that's bull crap in my country, I gotta fucking push another button just for another language, well, you're stupid, you're just a stupid hater, so, it's Tony, Tony Aloysius t-shirt, Aloysius means fame and war, Tony Aloysius had died in a car wreck exactly 10 years after JFK was assassinated, to the day, on Thanksgiving Day, on Thanksgiving night, on Thanksgiving night, November 22nd, 1973, uh, Tony Aloysius Gripshiver had died in a car wreck at 18 years old. Um, the alcohol may have been a factor, and William Rich of Union was the survivor in that car. So um, He was a German-American, and that's uh, where I get my German-American uh, uh, culture, heritage, and history from. So, carrying on. Who speaks German? The overwhelming majority of those who speak German is American-born. They were taught by the members of their family. The history of German as an ethnic language reaches back to the beginnings of German immigration. It has most likely been spoken since 1608, when the first permanent German settlers arrived at Jamestown, and is clearly therefore no more foreign to America than is English. The first recorded reference to a sermon given in German dates to 1657 in New Amsterdam, which was heavily settled by Germans. Also, German was one of the official languages of New Sweden. After 1683, German flourished with the beginnings of the German immigration. In the 18th century, the question arose about establishing German as an official language. During the American Revolution, the Continental Congress had numerous publications and broadsheets printed in German, beginning in 1774 with the Proceedings of the Continental Congress. There was even a sign at the Castle Gardens, which was before Ellis Island, where the group servers had landed in 1869 which was in German. So English and German were the two dominant, uh, I guess, uh, European languages in, um, in the 1860s, uh, 1800s, uh, late 1800 immigration, German migration period. So at the same time, the German language press was well established for several decades. So the article, Articles of Confederation appeared in German. Many more publications were issued in German. At the same time, German language press already well established for several decades. In fact, the first announcement of the Declaration of Independence appeared on July 5th, 1776, in Henry Miller's newspaper, The Stats Boat. The question often arises as to whether there is a vote to make German an official language on a national basis, and the answer is that there almost was. In 1794, German Americans from the state of Virginia petitioned the House of Representatives that U.S. laws be printed in German. The Speaker of the House, Frederick Muhlenberg of Pennsylvania, also president, was also president of the German Society of Pennsylvania and desired very much to maintain his position in the House, which meant that he had to play politics. At the time, there's a great deal of anti-immigrant sentiment due to the French Revolution and fear of foreigners, non-Anglos. Rather than supporting the German-American petition, Muhlenberg referred to a committee, which meant death by pocket vetoes, and resubmitted again. Uh, it was tabled by ref referral to a committee that was charged with investigating the matter. This petition was submitted at the same time that the question of naturalization of immigrants was being discussed. Muhlenberg must have felt that to support such a petition would have weakened not only his position as a House Speaker, but also that of the naturalization legislation. The myth that emerged uh, from this was that the Ger that German almost became national language except for one vote, which I had heard that German almost became the national language of America, but, but one vote, which was cast by Muhlenberg, but that's not the case. Even if it had been brought to a vote, German would have been 
established not as the only U.S. language, but as a language equal with English in terms of printing laws and documents. The one vote myth most likely derives from what happened in Pennsylvania. In 1828, a motion was defeated by one vote to make German equal with English. However, many states, such as Ohio in 1817, recognized the importance of German and authorized the printing of state documents in German. Um, so, more stuff about German Americans. The, the, the main thing I actually wanted to read was this list of, um, of German, famous German Americans, prominent German Americans, which is, which actually goes on for pages. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it in the nine minutes since I'm allowed 15 minutes per video. So, prominent German Americans. Further information on many of these can be found in the Dictionary of, Amer of American Biography, a standard biography reference source, as well as the bibliographies listed at the end of this volume. So, prominent German Americans. I'm just going to read down the list. Either you know them or you don't. Joseph Albers. Well, maybe I might mention some of them. Okay. John Peter Altgeld, Governor of Illinois. Matt Hild, Anarchy, uh, author. Carl Ardent, Art, J.R. Ardent, Art. <laughs> John Jacob Astor, financier, fur trader. Leon Bix, Peter Beck, Judah P. Benjamin, Emil Berliner, Maximilian Berlitz, Albert Bierstadt, Walter P. Chrysler, who is an automobile, automobile manufacturer. Chrysler is a German uh, man, a German-American. George Armstrong Custer, a failed general. Adolf Den. Uh, Johann de Kolb, Marlene Dietrich, Dietrich, Everett M. Dirksen, Theodore Dreiser, who's a novelist, Albert Einstein, a physicist, so physics, physics, Dwight D. Eisenhower, the 34th U.S. President, also pointed out the military industrial complex, Albert B. Faust, L Lionel Feininger, Lion Fetch Twanger, Heinrich H. Fick, Carl Folan, Henry C. Frick, I hope that's not the Frick I think I, I think he is, Henry L. Gehrig, uh, Gehrig, so Henry L. Gehrig, is that Lou Gehrig? I don't know, maybe, 14, 41, he died when 30, 38 years old, Oscar Maria Graf, Walter Gropius, George Graz, Franz Joseph Grund, Oscar Hammerstein, Oscar Hammerstein II, Frederick Hecker, Johann G. E. Heckewelder, Henry J. Hines, a food packer, Carl P. Heisen, a 48er, Johann Martin Henney, founded the first German Catholic newspaper in the United States, became the, bishop, the Archbishop of Milwaukee, Nicholas Herkimer, Milton S. Hershey, founder of Hershey Chocolate, so Hershey Chocolate is a German American. Hershey, Hershey Chocolate, Hershey. You had Hershey, you had Chrysler. So those are major Heinz, I think maybe Heinz. It sounds like a German name. So Hershey's Chocolate, Chrysler Car, Heinz Ketchup, Milton S. Hershey, Michael Hilgas, Herbert C. Hoover, 31st U.S. President, Theodore Hubener, scholar. Abraham Jacobi, Otto Kahn, Michael Carl Tessin, Johann Kelpius, Henry Kissinger, <laughs> which is not a great German to have, but he was very influential in uh, politics, American politics. Uh, Chile, the Chicago Boys, um, they, they, uh, Kissinger, I would say, is probably responsible for the assassination of Arbenz. Was his name Arbenz, a Chilean leader in 1973, a coup d'état, Henry Kissinger, Edward Kleinschmidt, who was an inventor, Otto Klemperer, Gustav Korner, Conrad Kress, Fritz Lang, Lotte Lehmann, Jacob Liesler, Emanuel Lutz, Francis Lieber, Ernst Lubitsch, Christopher Ludwig, Ludwig, Maria Ludwig, Thomas Mann, who is a literary author, H.L. Mencken, uh, editor, author, and critic, Christian Metz, founder of the Amina Colonies, Hans Otfried von Musbach, 
Peter Minuit, or Minuit, Henry Mullenberg, father of the Lutheran Church in America, Frederick Munch, Hugo Munsterberg, scholar and author, Thomas Nast, Thomas Nast, artist and character characterist, Thomas Nast drew, I think, Santa Claus, Wilhelm Nast, founder of the German American Methodist Church, Reinhold Niebuhr, theologian, Gert Nyers, Conrad Niles, or Conrad Nyes, Chester W. Nimitz, Jacob Nix, uh, Anna Ottendorfer, Erwin Panofsky, Franz Daniel Pastoris, the founder of the first permanent G German settlement in America, Franz Daniel Pastoris, John Pershing, World War I General, John Pershing, Wilhelm Pfander, John A. Quitman, Johann George Rapp, Heinrich A. Ratterman, Walter Rauschenbusch, uh, er Eric or Heinrich, Maria Remark, Walter Ruther, Edward V. Rickenbacker, David Rittenhouse, John D. Rockefeller, industrialist. So Rockefeller, <laughs> he's a German, John D. Rockefeller, Johann A. Roebling, Bill, uh, engineer and a bridge builder, Julius Rosenwald, a merchant and philanthropist, Ger George Herman, Babe Ruth, so Babe Ruth was a German American, the um, Elvis Presley's father was a German American, so that would make Elvis Presley a German American, Christopher Sauer, a colonial printer, Fritzy Schiff, uh, Jacob Schiff, Michael Schlatter, Arnold Schoenberg, Charles Schott, Ferdinand Schumacher, Elizabeth Schumann, Carl Schertz. Carl Schertz is a 48er, U.S. Senator from Missouri and Secretary of the Interior. Charles Sealsfeld, Oswald Seedensticker, Joseph Seligman, Franz Siegel, Civil War General, August C. Spagenberg. Klaus Spreckels, John Steinbeck, a novelist, author of um, about the Okies and the Dust Bowl and the poor people. Were they sad story about the Oklahoma people had to go out west? I don't know. The Grapes of Wrath. The Grapes of Wrath. Charles P. Steinmetz, Henry Steinway. Piano Builder, Alfred uh, Stieglitz, Levi Strauss, inventor of the world-famous blue, blue Jeans, so Levi Strauss is a German-American, Clement Studebaker, car manufacturer, John A. Stutter, or Sutter, uh, and owner of land where the California gold rush began, Theodore Thomas, Paul Tillich, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, George S. Verick, Wernher von Braun, August von Willich, a 48er, a journalist, and a Civil War officer, Baron Fried, uh, Friedrich Wilhelm von Steuben, Revolutionary War General, Robert Wagner, Lillian Wald, Bruno Walter, Carl F. W. Walther, Robert E. Ward, Kurt v uh, Whale, or Vale, Wilhelm Vetling, W's, I think, are pronounced as V's, right, sometimes. Some famous German thinker. Franz Warfell, George Westinghouse, Frederick Weyenhauser, Wendell Wilkie, Rabbi Isaac M. Wise, Kurt Wolf, David Zeisberger, Johann Peter Zinger, who is a printer established the principle of freedom of the press, John, Johann Peter Zinger and Nicholas von Zinzendorf, who is a bishop and a missionary. So those are famous German Americans. You also have Kurt Vonnegut. You have um, Kurt Vonnegut. You have Take Me Home, Country Roads to the Place. John John Denver. John Denver is a German American. Leonardo DiCaprio is a German American. Um, I want to say the woman from Speed, Sandra Bullock. I think she's a German-American. Um, 
She knows German language. I guess that doesn't really make her German. She's a German-speaking person. But anyways, the German-American experience. Check it out. If you uh, have ancestry from the German lineage, yeah, you check this book out so that way you know who you are and where you came from. The German-American experience. I'm Jonathan Masters. Uh, peace in the Middle East.